dead by an assassin under orders from the Spanish king. But he had already become the hero of the Dutch people. His name and his history are still remembered in the Dutch national anthem, Het Wilhelmus. After William's death, the Low Countries agreed to unite. They also wanted to put an end to religious persecution forever. So agreements were made about this too. These agreements were laid down in a covenant named the Union of Utrecht. In 1648, the Republic of the Union of the Low Countries became one independent state. In the 17th century, Holland was conspicuously rich and powerful. Why was it that such a small country had so much power and so many colonies? Holland has always been a country of shipbuilders and merchants. This is one of the ships on which Dutch merchants sailed the world 300 years ago. It sailed for the VOC, the Dutch East Indies Company. With these ships, the Dutch traded with countries like Japan and Ceylon, later called Sri Lanka. The East Indies became one of Holland's colonies. The Dutch East Indies Company traded mostly in spices. The Dutch West Indies Company traded with Africa, the Caribbean and America. Most of its trade was in gold and later in slaves too. They were taken from Africa and were put to work on plantations in Suriname for instance. As not only trade, but also science and fine art were going so well in Holland, the 17th century was called the Golden Age. Products from all over the world came to Amsterdam and were stored in one of the huge warehouses along the water. Merchants and aristocrats had beautiful houses built along these canals. Refugees, such as the Huguenots from France, contributed to the prosperity. They came to the Netherlands for its religious freedom. In this period, half of Amsterdam's population was made up of foreigners. In the Golden Age, there were about five million paintings made in Holland. Here in Amsterdam lived and worked the most famous painter of that time, Rembrandt van Rijn. And his largest and most famous painting hangs in the Rijksmuseum. The Night Watch. The light in the schilderij is so bijzonder that it wel echt The light in the painting looks extraordinarily real. Op 
Op 14 juli 1789. On the 14th of July 1789, the French Revolution began, an event celebrated by the French every year. You're probably wondering what this has to do with Dutch history. Well, Holland is a European country, and much of what takes place in European countries affects Holland too. The power in France was unfairly distributed. One small group of the rich ruled over everyone else. The French people rebelled en masse and this became the French Revolution. In Holland, the king was afraid that people would revolt against him too. So he had the Dutch constitution altered. And the man for the job was the famous Dutch politician Johan Rudolf Torbecke. Torbecke introduced parliamentary democracy. He thought ministers should be responsible to the House of Representatives and not to the king. The king's power was reduced and the people were given more rights. The church and the state were also separated. The Dutch people were free to practice whatever religion they wanted to. Torbecke's constitution forms the basis for the present democracy. During the second half of the 19th century, factories were being built in many places. Thanks to the invention of the steam engine, textile mills and steel factories grew into important new industries. A school funding controversy broke out in Holland when Catholics and Protestants demanded that their children be given education grounded in their respective faiths. To add weight to these demands, the first political parties were started up. From that moment on, other groups also set up political parties to further their aims. Social laws came into being to improve the working conditions of the workers and education became compulsory. All children had to go to school from then on. During this period, Parliament's powers were further increased. More and more men were given the right to vote for a representative. Foreign policy was neutral. The Netherlands was careful not to take sides in any of the many conflicts arising in Europe. These conflicts finally exploded into the First World War, which raged across Europe from 1914 until 1918. After the First World War, all Dutch men were given the right to vote. The women of the Netherlands were not in agreement with this. Under leadership of the first female medical doctor of Holland, Aletta Jacobs, they fought for women's voting rights and won. Then, in 1939, the Second World War broke out. Adolf Hitler, the leader of Nazi Germany, occupied Europe. Holland wanted to remain neutral again, but the Germans invaded the country in 1940 and bombarded Rotterdam. The Dutch government went into exile in England. After 1940, the good times disappeared fast. First the war, then capitulation, then the German occupation, and the suffering of the Jews began. This is from the diary of a 13-year-old Jewish girl. Her name, Anna Frank. She was given a diary for her birthday, and she immediately began to write in it. The major part of her diary is about the time she spent here in the Achterhuis, or the house at the back. That's what this place was called. During the war, Anna and her parents, her sister and four other Jews had to hide away from the German soldiers here. 
Want steeds meer Joodse inwoners Increasing numbers of Jews were being picked up and transported to concentration camps and killed in the gas chambers. But Anna, who wrote her diary in this little room, her parents and the other hideaways were betrayed and therefore arrested.